Um, I'd like to spend my five minutes of fame. I don't think I'll be exercising the um, muscular wrist of the um, bell ringer too much um, by flagging an idea that's been kind of keeping me awake at night and I hope that once I share it with you it'll do the same for you too. And it relates to the regulatory regime of the NEM which is the most fascinating part of the whole electricity system I'm sure everyone would agree. The regulatory framework for the NEM was not discovered by a prophet chiselled in stone on the summit of Mount AEMC. <laughs> sure, the rules grew out of the National, uh, the National Grid Protocol, but they were also the product of a particular political, economic and technological milieu in the 1990s. From my point of view, the two key features of this milieu were a belated post-Reaganite and Thatcherite zeal for privatisation and deregulation and on the other hand, a highly centralised electricity system, as we've heard, reflecting the one-way flow of energy from centralised generators to passive consumers. In fact, end users were not even part of the original design of the, uh, the national electricity rules. And so we've had to have more chapters and a separate uh, retail framework to deal with, with retail issues. Both of these features have been radically challenged in the past five years. On the first, it's now widely recognised that the NEM has failed to deliver on at least two arms of the energy trilemma, affordability and sustainability. As a result, the idea of the energy system as a market run according to the mantra of economic efficiency and isolated from its broader social and environmental context is pretty much dead. Sorry, mate. Governments and at least one market body are getting back into the game, distorting the market. What we know so far of the NEG, AEMO's draft integrated system plan, the South Australian government's forays into batteries and a virtual power plant, and the boondoggle known as Snowy 2.0 are all evidence of that. On the second feature of the centralised system, as we've heard, thanks to the plummeting cost of rooftop solar and our batteries, what was uh, once a centralised system with a one-way energy flows quickly becoming decentralised and two-way flows are common. So, as a result, we're witnessing perhaps a once in a century transformation in the way that energy is generated, transported, stored and traded or shared. And we aren't even in the middle of this transformation yet. If you think about how much disruption has been caused by the shift over the last five to ten years, bear in mind that in that time the proportion of fossil generation in the NEM has only dropped by about five or six percent from 87% to around 80-81% and that's taking into account all the behind the metre solar and the closure of Hazelwood. In other words, the transformation and the disruption that it will bring have only just begun. Of course no one knows how, how where or when it will end. But if we take the CSIRO ENA network transformation roadmap as our best guess, then by 2050 generation will be 100% renewable. Half of all energy in the system will be generated by consumers and in spite of networks paying DER consumers for grid support services, all consumers will be better off financially. Of course, some of us, including those on the panel here, I'm sure, would like that transformation to happen a lot sooner. So I think you can probably guess where I'm going with this. My question that arises in relation to the, the, the rules is this. In the context of a zero net carbon high DER future, will the structure of the current rules still be fit for a purpose or at some point will we need to scrap them and start again? <laughs> I'm not saying that current rules aren't fit for purpose now. They've been around for only about 13 years. That's barely middle-aged for regulatory regimes. But putting aside my personal issues, around the glacial pace of reform around rule changes and what I regard as the AEMC's rather narrow interpretation of the current NEO, the National Electricity Objective, I am concerned that the rules are the product of an outdated ideology and system structure and sooner or later they might become like an old house that you keep adding rooms to until it creaks and groans and you get lost in it and it starts to feel haunted. Consider, consider some of the chapters or rooms that you might want to add to the current rules. Batteries, microgrids, virtual power plants, peer-to-peer -peer or local energy trading, and off-grid systems and consumers. 
We might also want to rethink the whole design so that it's more flexible and responsive to ongoing technological and cultural changes and that it's more centred around the services consumers want rather than the hardware and the financial market, bearing in mind that the current rules are structured around what is it, market participants, the financial market, transmission and distribution, and everything hangs off those kind of chapters. We might also, as we've heard uh, over the last day and a half, want to pay closer attention to how the rules for the energy system interact with climate policy on the one hand and building standards and planning law on the other. At the moment, they're all just ships in the night. Beyond that, even, and finally, as an environmentalist, I'm acutely aware of the already serious consequences of one degree of climate change when we're currently heading for nearly four degrees by the end of this century. So I have to also consider the prospect of a dystopian future that's more like a Mad Max movie, with energy supplies being hoarded and fought over than a neat and ordered system in which everyone does what they're told and pays their bills on time. Oh, dag nabbit. I timed myself for five minutes, anyway. <coughs> Peace to you too. <laughs> so, you can't regulate for a future like that, but you can make it less likely to pan out by making rules that facilitate or accelerate the decarbonisation of the grid and the empowerment of individuals and communities who are determined to unshackle themselves. I'm getting carried away here. From the yoke, <laughs> unshackle themselves from the yoke of centralised control. <laughs> Short-term thinking. Super profits by incumbents <laughs> and the deification of the market. <laughs> uh, uh, I had more, but what can I say? <laughs> I've, I've got my applause, so I'm off. <laughs>